I'm Rebecca, and Michael has given me the keys to run the show today. So I'm really excited for us to talk about transferable skills when making a career transition. Hey, guys. How's it going? All right. So um, we can go ahead and you know jump right in. I'm excited to be on today. And I wanted to have this discussion on transferable skills because I think it's such a hot topic right now. I know it's something that we've been getting asked a lot from folks on LinkedIn or you know people who are looking to make a career pivot and really with the great resignation you know career pivots are becoming much more commonplace we've seen that people are realizing that you know they don't have to stay in the same industry or the same career path for 30 years and you know i think it's great that we're starting to embrace nonlinear careers more culturally um, what are your thoughts on that yeah you know i think about it and when i look at my biggest role models growing up my mom my dad my Mom, when she left being a waitress, went straight into the insurance business and is there now. And my dad um, retired with 30 some odd years as a mechanic at American Airlines. So, you know, kind of thinking about those things and then looking at the folks that I know now that I look up to and no one's been in their position for more than 10 years. Yeah, I do think the mindset is shifting and especially, you know, recently, too. I think we're seeing that people are a lot less likely to stay in roles where they're no longer happy, whether it be that they're not being fulfilled or they're not challenged, you know, maybe there's not that work-life balance or they don't feel their mental health is supported. Um, and I think that's something that we have seen, you know, too, just in recent, um, you know, months picking up quite a bit more. Yeah, you know, as um, a resident elder millennial, I think a lot about the folks that I've um, interacted with, my former supervisors, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of baby boomer leadership, a lot of Gen X supervisors, and it just never was a thing to leave a job because it sucked. Um, uh, believe me, <laughs> I've been in a few of those, right? And <clears throat> when we work with clients now, we've got clients who straight up say, like, I quit today because um, I just couldn't take it anymore. And um, I've got friends in my personal life that have said, you know what, my mental health is more important and they've made it work. I, I just think it's something that, I mean, I think it's really great. It's wonderful. Um, but it's almost, uh, let's say it's foreign to me and I'm excited yeah. to see what it, what things will look like soon. I agree with you. I think it's a good thing that we are seeing this, you know, cultural and mindset shift. I am happy to see it and to see that, you know, people are really, you know, thinking more about what career alignment means to them. So I guess let's go ahead and get into, you know, kind of the, the meat and potatoes of, you know, the transferable skills, um, because I think the struggle comes into play when we still have job advertisements asking for X years of experience and requesting certain skills. And that can be a real challenge for, you know, candidates to get their foot in the door. Um, I know we've been asked, you know, about candidates, um, you know, from people like how they should address this struggle. So what's the first place that you would tell somebody to start when it comes to showing their transferable skills? Yeah, well, I might not be the host today, but uh, before we get started, I do want to make sure that I let you go, guys know that you need to like, subscribe, and ring that bell um, so that you see our content come up every week. But yeah, back to that question, you know, the first place that you should start is with the job ad. Um, there are other places as you get a little bit deeper when you become a real pro at figuring out how to transfer your skills and we'll talk a little bit about those, but the real place to start is with the job ad. And I have an exercise that I tell all my clients to go through. It's the exercise I go through myself and it's the same exercise I uh, have Rebecca go through each time that she's looking at a new job. And that exercise is this. Back in the day, I would print out the job ad. Now I turn it into a PDF. But I pull the job ad and I start reading through it. Top to bottom, not just at the KSAs. Folks who have watched our videos know uh, that I'm a little bit of a KSA hater. They're great. Read them. But the whole ad is important. So I'll start top to bottom. I'll read about what the company says about itself. I'll read the KSAs. I'll read all of those pieces. And as I'm going through, um, I've got three highlighters. Highlighter number one is for, hell yes, I've done this I've done this thing. I've done this thing almost exactly. I can really, really, beyond a shadow of a doubt, talk about how I've done that. Highlighter number two is for, I could do that. I've done something similar enough to that. I've used a product similar to that, or I've used its competitor, or I've been in a space, you know, adjacent to it. And I'll highlight everything in that. 
And the third, which we won't really talk a lot about today, but it's something that I want you guys to keep in mind um, as we're going through, and it will come up in future videos, is things that there's no way in hell I've done. That I've never done this before. There's no way that I know how to do it. And I'd be lying to somebody or to myself if I said I could do it. And those are just as important as the first two. I call those the skill gap. So anytime I'm looking for the next job, if I want those skills to be for a future job, then I want to make sure that I'm looking for those. So those are my skill gap and I keep an eye on the skill gap. But to go back to the first two, the first two are really easy. You know, when you're when you're looking at that first set of skills I've done before, well, those are really easy bullets to put together because those are bullets where it's I've done this at this job in this way. And then when we get into others, you know, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated when we have to start thinking about how do I explain what I did in their terms? Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, translating those, you know, things that you've done into bullets, which I think it's really important, you know, to point out, thinking about using the language of the industry that you're going into. Um, you know, so for example, like if you're a teacher and you are used to working with parents, you know, students and administration, um, but you're looking at, you know, positions, maybe, at, you know, companies, educational technology companies or, you know, other types of companies outside of education, you know, maybe thinking about reframing that experience to show how you've worked with various stakeholders and kind of making a language shift. Um, or, you know, maybe you're a counselor, but you want to work, you know, in HR, thinking about, you know, how you have experience handling complex issues, um, you know, even things like, you know, grievances or, you know, employee concerns and just like translating it and reframing it for them. I think that's a really important, you know, key, because just because someone understands how that experience, you know, translates when they're looking at it. Um, the person reviewing the advertisement, the recruiter or, you know, hiring manager um, looking at your resume may not, you know, really pick up on that unless we make that connection. Yeah. And one thing that I really want to stress to everyone who's going through this exercise, because there is a there's a fine balance. You're sort of walking the tightrope when you start working on your transferable skills. Now, what I don't want you to do is completely sanitize your resume of every single thing that made you uniquely you. Um, we worked with a client at one point who was told by another um, a, another person that they worked with that they should remove all instance of the word teacher on their resume. So they were kind of putting that they were public sector workers at a um, in a district or that sort of thing. And you know the problem with that is that if you go completely to the other end, you can't talk about the things that make you uniquely you and the things that you bring in that other folks uh, don't. So an example of that, you know, let's talk about software as a service. It's a really hot commodity right now. We've got a lot of folks in a lot of different industries that want to move that route. And if you're not there, it's really, really easy for you to want to sanitize down and start talking about customers that you've worked with uh, CRM solutions that you, you've implemented and that sort of thing. That's great. But if you go too far the other direction, you don't get to talk about all those great training and development skills that you have or all of the great um, instances where you've really made an impact in your job. So there's a really fine line between going in and, and using the language of the industry and making it look like you've never been in any other industry. And you know that's one of those things where it takes a little bit of practice and sometimes it takes a little bit of help from someone as well. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. You know, it can be um, so easy to want to shy away from that, you know, experience that you have in a previous field because you think, oh, well, maybe this isn't what they're looking for. And so maybe I need to, you know, make it look exactly like this. And while you do want to use their language and, you know, show how your skills are transferable, you also want to highlight, like you were talking about, you know, what you've done that's unique because you do have, um, you know, some of those unique superpowers and that's some of what differentiates you. One thing that I know career transitioners, you know, really struggle with is going up against applicants who have direct experience, you know, more one-to-one -one experience in the field that they're applying to. And so I think one thing that can, you know, set you apart as a transitioner from those other folks is showing what you bring in addition to, you know, what um, folks that are maybe coming directly um, from the industry have. So you may have some experiences that they don't have because of your unique background. So I think that's a really great point. 
Um, yeah, all right, so we'll want to start with a job advertisement to get an idea of what language um, that you'd want to use and what skills that you'd want to talk about. So how would you tell someone to actually start talking about those transferable skills? How would someone know where to start and how to actually talk about that? Yep, so that whole thing, it's research, research, research. So every industry talks about itself differently. Folks in industries across the board have their own lingo, they have their own jargon. Um, when, uh, when I talk to people in all sorts of walks of life, um, there's a certain amount of commonality that we have to work on, right? So that we can understand one another. A, a key way to, to get involved and to start learning about how to, how to speak that language of the place that you're trying to go is by actively engaging in the types of things that they're doing. So um, we've got a lot of folks probably watching this right now that are teachers or uh, former teachers or that sort of thing. And you as a teacher know that you are often reading trade publications or reading learning and development journals and that sort of thing, because you want to stay fresh. And for other people in other industries, you're doing the same thing, right? If you're working in logistics, you're probably reading trade publications about supply chain. Well, when you're transitioning, you also need to transition some of that reading material. Um, I really recommend going in and uh, reading information written in the hand of the place that you're going. So if you can find websites, blogs that are um, employee led or find blogs of companies themselves or find press releases that they've put out as opposed to relying on more um, layman press releases from mm -hmm. someone like CNN, right? So kind of starting there, getting yourself immersed in the way that they talk. So you, you will start with job ads and job ads do a great, uh, a, a great start of that. But taking that, reading multiple job ads, once you've read 20, 30, 40, 50 job ads in that industry, and you're starting to look at trade publications, that sort of thing, you're going to get an idea of the way that they talk about one another and the way that they talk about the things they're interested in. Um, and I really think that you should double down in that space and, and learn how they speak about the things that they do. Yeah. And also following those, you know, companies can be really valuable to start engaging with them. Um, and then one thing that I would, you know, tack on to that too for folks is, you know, talking to people that are already within the space. So you might have heard this, you know, referred to as um, like an informational interview, or maybe that term is new to you, but you know, that's essentially reaching out to people who are already in the realm. So maybe someone that's, you know, a couple of years ahead of where you want to be doing what you might want to be doing and just having a conversation with them on, you know, how did you get here? What is your day to day like? What do they like about it? What do they dislike about it? And that gives them a better understanding of, you know, the space and helps you to know also what you need to maybe be working on and focusing on in your transition. So it's great. All right. So, um, you know, I think the research piece is really important, like you talked about, you know, doing that research to make sure that you really understand the roles that you're applying for and also understand the companies that you're applying to to get an idea of which ones. Um, so any other guidance that you would give transitioners who are looking to show how those skills can transfer? Yeah. At the end of the day, you've really got to connect the dots. OK, so what I mean by that is that a hiring manager, recruiter, um, someone at a company needs to understand why the thing that you did matters to them. And to be completely frank, uh, I am a hiring manager. I work with a lot of hiring managers. I help people interview all the time. And I have found that a lot of folks in that space are not really out of the box thinkers. Um, and that may sound mean, and I don't really mean it that way, but it's when you think about it, a hiring manager's bottom line is, I need a person who can do this job. And they need to be able, they need to be able to do the job, they need to be willing to do the job, and they need to be a good fit. And so if I get a uh, resume from a person who one-to-one -one fits, and it just really makes sense, it's a lot easier for me to just say, I'm going to interview them. They're probably going to be fine. They're probably going to be a good butt in a seat. They're probably going to be able to do the job in six months. And I'm probably not going to have to spend a lot of money. 
And so that's the way that they'll go. Now, connecting the dots is really important. What you need to do is to be able to say to somebody in a really short amount of time, professional summary in your early job bullets, that sort of thing, that I understand the space. I can talk like the space does. I've done things like the space does. And I have additional things that I bring to the table that the guy who's just making a lateral doesn't. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. So for those, you know, watching this back, really thinking about aligning, you know, and connecting those dots for them. And so outlining, you know, maybe how your skills align in your resume or in a cover letter, a cover letter can be a really great place for people who are making a transition, you know, to also tell a little bit of that story and connect the dots, like you were saying, because, you know, for example, you can talk about, you know, before when I did X, you know, I got experience with Y, which prepared me for this task at your company and really showing them, you know, how that experience has prepared you for that role. So I think that's uh, great advice and hope that um, you guys have found this helpful. It's been really fun taking over the channel today. So if you guys found this helpful, please like and subscribe and let us know if you want to see more videos like this. Um, Michael will be back next week. So let us know what you want to hear next. Yep. Thanks, guys.